Hi, I'm Rob from Hobbsing. Thanks for joining me live here on YouTube for my top 10 beers of April 2021. I'm always rushing for these, to get these fucking things up and running. So let me have a beer. And as it happens, it is one of it is on the list. So I'm gonna open it. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. So let's get this one open. Because this is that beer. It's from the first, same brewery as the first brewery that I'm going to talk about, but Oh, a bit of ASMR there for that, for all you perverts out there. And I'll give you a little bit of review of this when I talk about it. But anyway, sip a beer for the um, bank holiday non-working man. Mm. Yeah, I always need... Oh, give me five minutes. Bed in, sort myself out. And then I'll be up and running. So, right, first one. And once again, we're going all out. Say hello to Can Cam again. Yeah, you fucking know it. You love it. So, first beer to mention. Um, on a bit of a Homer's trip on this one, as um, they're about a 20 minute walk from where I'm sat right now, and that is from Salt Beer Factory. And it was the peanut, uh, peanut s'mores with the odd umlauti. Not um, I don't know what they're called. I'm not Norwegian. Collab with Lurvy. A fluff and nutter stout, which sounds perverted if you ask me but it is yes so it's a seven percent um, abv chocolate peanut butter marshmallow stout so lovely stuff i've actually had i think i've had three cans of this now it's nice stuff and also for the keenly eyed yes i did purposely put my leave my remote control there yeah no I didn't i was watching harry and the guys on before i came on here but yeah okay. I'm, I'm cool i've got my fucking action broken but again motherfuckers yeah yeah Mm. Ah, right, yes, yeah, so yeah, it was lovely. I mean, seven percent as well. So, um, put back to me, see my lovely face, lovely tired face. Um, yeah, for seven percent, it was lovely, flavors and beer, and it just it had all those flavors. I think they were a lovely base stout, um, behind it all, and then it allowed those flavors to kind of shine upon that kind of like solid base stout. I mean, it wasn't kind of incredible. I mean, it's not going to set your world on fire, but I think you'll often find, sorry, I'm sorting my socks out a bit hot. Such a fucking pro. Um, yes, so, yeah, I think it was just a lovely, well-made beer. The water's over there. That was a blunder, wasn't it? I knew there'd be something. Fuck me over straight. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and so they presented the flavours in a really effective way. Um, but a respectable ABV. I'm into that kind of ABV for stouts. Okay, I know all the best ones are going to be a lot higher ABV, as you will have. No um, surprise that there is a few of those going to be on the list as well, as as always will be. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I think I paid like £3.20 or something for um, the cans of this. And one of them, or no, two of them, I, I got a 10% off because it was like the bank holiday weekend thing that did. The last weekend, what? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it we mean around three quid for a, a collab 440 adjunct heavy stout. It was really nice. So I'll give you, I endeavor to um give you the the whole um untappage on on the on these breweries, but you know, last time I think I did two and then got carried away and completely forgot to do them. But that's what happens when I, I don't give myself enough time to. Oh, ease myself into the um, stream. Frankly, they're getting back from my parents' house, my little boy, and um, trying to get this shiz on the road. On the road, got the wrong one up, Anna. On my, on my, on my untapped. Right, everybody loves an, an, a, a visible sneeze on on cam. So. Sneeze finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You know how you're doing when you content creator, star, cameraman, the fucking whole shebang. You know the fucking deal. So yeah, let's go on the old, the old on, the old untapped. You know you love it. You know the fucking love a bit untapped live. See what these. I've not looked at any of these, so it's gonna be a surprise to me what these kind of ratings, these beers are getting. So let's have a look at this one. So yes, Pete and. I don't know what the, those Scandinavian O's with the line through were called, or 
how are you? Oh, wow. Rating for this has really dropped. I think when I bought it, it was over a four. Now it's a 3.73. Probably, yeah, only 86 reviews. I think you mean, you bunch of shits. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. A lot of people um, are just drinking them at home, as you would. I don't think they've got this on draft of the, the tap room, um, which I would. Oh, they've got a craft asylum one there. Um, so that's one of their bars in Leeds. Gareth D and the place to be. Not one of my favourite drinking holes, but if it was on at the brewery, I'd go and drink some because I do enjoy it. And there's loads of space out there, so nuts and sweetness do come th through, but the beer is the dominant flavour here. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm on board with you there, Neil M. Yeah, so... Beats on the nose, honestly tastes a bit fluffy. Cheers, SM. Amaze you managed to face out of your grip. Mm. So who's giving it shit ratings? Because everybody's giving it pretty good ratings so far. It's so thin, watery for my liking. It's same percent. It's not thin at all. It's really it's really kind of like top end of medium, bottom end of full. I thought it was a very nice beer. Uh, what's it say there? Struggle to find peanut butter and marshmallow. I like that though, Matthew H, because it doesn't if you want that shit, go to Amson, that I mean for me, I'm over that shit. Uh, this is the kind of level I, I quite like. So that's what Untap are saying about it. So not many ratings. I mean, it's been out a couple of weeks, but um, I thought it was very nice. Back to me. So, second one is one I'm drinking. So I'm kind of like, I'm breaking my own rules. I know I'm a rule breaker, I'm a maverick, I'm a wild man. <laughs> so, I thought I had 10 on the list. I've kind of got 9, and I've kind of got 11. So, we're going to go for kind of the 11 list. So, and I do have two from two breweries. Um, four in total from two breweries. Because I'm lazy and inconsistent. So, hmm, there you go. So, the next one up is a partially drunk can of which size do you push it to? From Salt again, which is Hessian. Which is a um, I didn't rap, make notes of the shit on this beer, but it's a coffee and cacao stout at 6.2% ABV. I've always been um, in search of something to replace a, a beloved breakfast stout um, made by an American brewery that I, I don't care to mention right now. I do love that beer, but you know. I'm very, I'm very kind of socially conscious, so I don't want to drink that beer. But also, I can't find it. And I don't want to go to that shop because that one not online. Whatever. But this is lovely. It is. It just it delivers once again. It's like the like the um the peanut butter smalls, peanut smalls. It um it's got a lovely base beer, which allows a real kind of like lovely roasty. Well, let's do the we'll do that fucking beer review thing, shall we? What almost mm, mm. it's kind of like a slightly fruity coffee, like um, orange, like dark chocolate orange, chocolate dark orange. Use your own terms. It's got a bit of that going on. It's got a lovely, just generic coffee. I love generic coffee. Even though I don't drink coffee, but the generic, the Nesc, probably a nice ne black Nescafe. But even though these are using, has been, I think. It has been. No, Jolly Bean, which I think are a local roastery. Um, so you get that kind of a really straightforward American stout. So it's unfettered by yeasty kind of nastiness. And it's also got a, a lovely straightforward coffee kick. Body-wise... Bang on medium, I'd say. But it's really drinkable. You do get a, a bit of dark chocolate in there. Yeah, it's really tasty. Once again, a massive bargain. Pour the rest of this out. Here's some mark. You hear that? Oh. Get, your, get your headphones on. Um, yeah, it's... Um, It's really cheap. I mean, it's part of the core range now. I think they're doing it for like two eighty a can. And once again, there was a um, a, a discount recently and um, a ten percent discount. So fucking hell. 
two fifty a pop. Yes, please. So I bought two. I will continue to buy this beer on a regular basis. I really, really like it. So got a couple of uh, comments. I'm gonna show them then. So we've got this got Matt Binks. Yes, I had two cans of this, it was great. Which one was that then? Eight minutes past. Oh, so you were on the um the peanut butter smalls. Yeah, nice, isn't it? Thomas from Winner Beer Review says, Hi, how you doing, buddy? And then Matt once again says, Salt do good beers. I've enjoyed everything I've had from them. Yeah, yeah. Some more than others. I mean, they are, I will be honest, they are one of my local breweries. And I've got two friends who work there, the lovely Colin and Tom, two, uh, the main brewers. I think they're the only brewers there at the moment. Um, lovely people. Um, but, and I don't, but I don't love everything from them. I don't go out of my way to buy the supermarket beers, um, but I will check out majority. I'm not bothering with the sour IPA this released. Majority of the specials I will pick up. So mm -mm -mm. that is a lovely beer. Next one, which I'm going to move on to. Can't, passing it over can cam is such a fucking professional. Yes. You know, oh, hang on, let's do Hessian on the old untapped. Got to keep reminding myself what people are saying about this. Yeah, Core Range beer from Salt Beer Factory. Do, 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 do. Full screen. There we go. So this one, 3.85. So it's higher rating. Um, very similar um, reviews. I mean, as, as far as numbers, but a bit higher. Yeah, you're on like three and a half, fours. I think that's kind of fair enough. Pangolin, that's that shop that had to rename because they weren't a bar anymore. And they had to change the usage during lockdown. So there you go. One of Salt's best? Excellent. Yes, Tom D M. I think I'm, I might be in agreement with you. It's one of the best I've had from Salt. I do like it a lot. Great cacao and coffee stout. Yep, I'd agree with that, James H. But yeah, as you can see, pretty consistent. I think it's a, it's a really simple beer, tobacco. Yeah, yeah, fairly thin. Eh, and no, I would say bitter. It's got a bit of coffee, bitter roast. For a core beer, this is great. Loads of coffee. Yeah, yeah, Gary B. I'm skin in the place to be. <laughs> I'm going to fucking bang that drum until into submission. But yeah, so I think it's a lovely beer. But, um, and something that I can drink. On a regular basis. I'm not somebody who has, I'm not a kind of casual drinker in that sense. Um, it's often my partner's here and we share beers. So two days a week we'll do that. And there's a couple more where it's like online chats and stuff. But I'm, I've become, thankfully, you know, I try and cut down. I mean, I'm sure we're all trying to cut down a little bit. Um, <laughs> for his own benefit in a variety of ways, financially and health-wise. Um, but... So I don't just have like stuff hanging around. I don't have kind of fridge fillers, that kind of thing, because I just don't. I try not to idly drink. Okay, this this is I'm creating content. I think if you if you hadn't noticed, so <laughs> and that's why I'm having some tonight. And it's also it's bank holiday. I'm having me old fucking injection on on Wednesday, so I'm not going to drink on Wednesday. Maybe not the weekend. See how I feel. Um. So this is my um my big blowout. See you on the other side. So next beer. Boom. Oh, no, wrong one. Can Cam. Overflow from the lovely people. Elusive. Oh, everybody's so lovely at these breweries, aren't they? So lovely people. Um, so, yeah, Elusive down in kind of Fitchhamstead. Fitchhamstead for the Southerners. Um, so it's a cold style beer, 4.8% ABV. Brewed in collaboration with Siren and... Double Barrel, who were kind of neighbouring. Saren is definitely a neighbour, and Double Barrel aren't a million miles away from them. Um, it's Yeah, so I said 4.8. I had this last Wednesday. Um, first beer of the day, still doing a bit of cooking, crack this open to share, just an easy drinker. Whoa, lovely beer. Really lovely beer. I mean, it just, it, it, it is Kolsch-like. And so you get that kind of, a bit more malt character, I'd say. Not as straightforward Pilsner-y kind of like affair or Hellas. A bit more malt character, a bit more body to it. Um, but a lovely amount of flavour. I mean, it really did have a nice, what, hoppy 
and a little bit of bitter bite and a little bit of kind of like herbaceous kind of citrus kind of bite to it but it had and then a little bit of sweetness lovely stuff i mean don't overlook this beer. Don't over, over, overlook overflow. Um, it's it's lovely. It's lovely stuff, and it kind of it inspired a, an evening of, of great beer, you know, like one after another. Like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. It's about three beers from that night um, in this list because they were just like, oh, on a bit of a rich run of fate form here, and um, and then it kind of spat, reminded me that there's a fantastic episode of Anthony Bourdain's uh, Parts Unknown, uh, the episode in Cologne. Check it out. There's plenty of beer content in it as well. Because I mean, Bodain, as much as he enjoys beer, he's, he's not into kind of the pontiness of beer, but um, he appreciates good beer and he's not afraid of beer. Uh, but he's a lager drinker primarily. But Kolsch is not. Well, if, you, if you're not Kolsch's, you're in the right place, aren't you? You know, you know, you're not Kolsch's. I'm not going to. I'm not explaining Kolsch right now. But you can't make a Kolsch in in Reading. You can make a Kolsch style beer. Um, but yeah, he kind of visits um, a couple of places. I think he visits. He visits. Uh, he goes to a cafe, I think. Well, maybe a tap room. And that looks lovely. And then he goes to a cafe, meets somebody, drinks more Kolsch. It all comes in like little glasses. Keeps it nice and cold. <laughs> Quaffing the Kolsch. And um, and then he goes. He gets on a on a train, and I think. Oh, Playing and goes to um, Dusseldorf and goes to makes alt beer at um, Uriga as well. So two really interesting kind of German beer, beer styles, probably slightly overlooked um, in in the kind of straightforward sense. I mean, come on, you crafty fuckers, you should know all that. You know, you know an alt beer and a Kolsch is, come on now. <laughs> um, but it's lovely. It's great content. It's about kind of enjoyment of beer in a social setting, <laughs> which will set me up beautifully for the next beer, but. Let's do the un untapped cheers. Elusive. Uh, over. Flow. It's back on the good stuff. Boom. So we've got... Oh, I know him. <laughs> Chris D. He's Phil's mate, I think. I think I met him once. <laughs> Yes, so uh, overflow. Um, yeah, four point eight, three point six. You mean bastards? That's a lovely beer. What's wrong with you? There he is. That's him. Yeah, it is him. My mate Phil's mate. See, he knows the score. He knows the score. Does Neil G? Yeah, it's a lovely beer. I mean, I guess it's easy to overlook these kind of same standards for all lagers to follow. Bitter but refreshing, light but flavoursome, and almost oaky finish to the finish. To the, to, oh, okay, 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 finish to this. Um, I completely agree. Soft honeyed malts, a touch of lemon, and grassy finish. Crisp and refreshing, was superbly drinkable. Nice. <laughs> I hope that sounded as good as it did in my head. Light and, light and melty. Oh, oh, it's a, such a lovely melty lag. Oh, it's, I love a colch when it's melty. Um, <laughs> there's a touch of bitterness, quite refreshing. Yeah, I mean, people are loving it. Some tight bastards have been downgrading this, but everybody who I saw on there were well educated, thoughtful drinkers who enjoyed a bottle or probably a can of, I think, can, I think first cans they ever did um, were, were uh, of this beer. Back to me. So, yeah. Next two, which will uh, pass me on nicely. It's all very anecdotal, the next two. So, um, keep me going until I finish this one before I move on to the. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I've got, I've, got I've got dregs. Got it all out. Don't worry. Yes. So, the next two, as you are all very well. Aware, we can drink in public again now, and not just slight scratters on the streets. Come on now, I know that's what you're usually doing, but um, I've seen you littering. Don't worry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> bottles of punk everywhere. I know it's just the state of the country. <laughs> no, we can obviously drink in public places again now. So I have visited three tap rooms, and these are from two of the visits. 
well, no, no, actually, I've been, yeah, yeah no, it's from one, isn't it? I'm completely lying. One was, come on, okay, yeah, it's probably quite a, 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 a personal um, reasons for this as well. So this was on the that, the Monday, 12th, was it? <clears throat> we were allowed to start drinking in public again. And um, it was my first beer that I had there, and it was Five Points Best, which is, uh, it was at White Locks in Leeds. That's my mouse. Um, it's 4.1% ABV. I wrote that down because um, I don't have a can of the cask. Um, it was in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a kind of like a, the average pub glass. But you know that one what goes like that? A bit of a bubble. It's not a nonic, is it? What they're called? I think they're called Tuli glasses, oddly. But the crafty wanker like us. Um, we know the Tuli, it's the tulip of something else. So um, it was in a, in a pub, proper pub glass. It was a pint. It was a best. It was a beautiful beer. First beer I've had on draft for probably uh, fucking long was. Jeez, no, no idea how long. Six months. Uh, I'm not someone who is nostalgic about cask at all. Um, I think there's a lot of bullshit regarding that. So I, I wasn't kind of like I won't get in if that wasn't doing it. But I was there with uh, with my partner and also a really good friend. Um, great pub. Relatively warm. <laughs> And we had a pint of that, and then after that, and it's a lovely malty bitter. I prefer a malty darker bitter than a, a pale bitter, like Tim for Taylor's Landlord, something like that. I prefer a bit more malty, a bit more nutty. And I do love Five Points Best, and, and Five Point and White Locks in Leeds, but open for over 300 years. It's owned by Ed Mason, who is the uh, owner of Five Points as well. So you always get that and pale on which was the second beer i had in there and that was lovely as well too and little bits in it and then from someone who's used to all the haze i was a bit like hang on there's bits of fucking chunky beer in the bit junkies junks in my beer what's all this about um but it was fine <laughs> it was lovely beer so two pints two pints and we're feeling a bit squiffy uh if I, i'm not i'm not gonna be um not gonna say i didn't so let's have a look at that on on tap because i don't have any visual representation for can can of this uh, uh five points best Buggles. oh it's another gonna goldings version oh but johnny garrett will be just in his pants over that 3.5 is it ever, ever flips it over there we go 3.5 you time bastards oh, it's best best oh, they're doing balls that looks so much better. What fucking beer are you drinking, motherfucker? That's not the beer. That's not the, not the fucking beer. It's darker than that. Bad photography, or they've, been, or they've taken the butt wrong beer. <coughs> Deep dive. See, that's more the bloody color. That's the color. That's what it looks like. Brown and twiggy. Not seem well, you've done five hundred mil bottles. I'm not sure. I think it's a beer that has to be drunk in the north, even though it's brewed by a Southern Brewery. Not from a dimple mug because that's the glass for wankers. Sorry, wankers. <laughs> it is. But yes, so that it's a lovely beer. A lot of people are <coughs> beefing about. I'm not saying it's simply the best. Oh I'm not gonna break into song, don't worry. Oh, there you go. She's, she's been drinking it. Oh, Ralphie P. Drinking it. Uh, oh, I thought that looks like for you. <coughs> That's why I should have my water. I'm off to get my water. Back in a second. Literally. I'm still here. Oh, Too much talking, not enough drinking. What's wrong with you, lad? I'm back. Untapped. You know you love it. Yeah, ash, ashy. Get the fuck out of here. Some toffee, some pepper. I'm going to go toffee. I'm not getting pepper. I'm not getting ashy. But yeah, it's a great beer. So it's a simple beer, but to be enjoyed on draft at White Locks, I'd say, or Pembury Tavern, which is a great pub in that there, London. So, second one being um, um, North, um, obviously from Leeds. Uh, there's Springwell Pills, which I don't have the ABV for, because that's I, I put that in the last minute. So now I can to reference Spring. Oh, Spring. 
Spring of Pills. Um, and that was at um, at the new brewery, which is called Springwell, which is really close to the halls of residence that my friends lived at uh, at first year of uni. So I've got some got some memories of being in there, the shitty little bar <laughs> in in Honeywell Court. But I mean, not the best beer. But once again, first visit there, another great milestone. That brewery opening, visiting that brewery for the first time, great setup, looks beautiful, beautiful place. We'll be revisiting when it's not as cold because it was when the sun moved and we were left in the shade of the um, large um, corrugated iron, corrugated steel industrial unit. That is the brewery. It got pretty fucking cold. And so it looks great inside. I'm an indoor drinker most of the time. I like to drink indoors, post outdoors. So, um, but we will be going back there, no doubt. Um, it was a fun time. Beer was... I always prefer North on, in can than draft. I've just got this thing. I've got this thing. So, untapped. But we've got 3.72. Close your eyes and imagine for a second you're here with us in our new home, Springwell. You're outside with your friends. The music is playing. The sun is shining. And you're drinking Springwell pills fresh from the tank. A picture soon to be reality. But for now... You're staying safe and drinking at home. Crisp lights around the Springwell Pearls. It's an unfiltered lager. Slightly hops with Kyster and Mittelfrew. There you go. I went a bit Terry Wogan at points there. Sorry about that. I suppose this is Keller Pills. Well, hang on. This is... Who's this? Who's Ryan? I suppose this is a Keller Pills. A little more earthy and grainy than a standard clean pills. Mouthfully smooth and a bit creamy. I rather like it, but it's not a, pel- a pilsner. It's a Keller Pils. All right, <laughs> that was the attitude I took from that. Getting good, good ratings. I mean, across the board, people are loving it. People are enjoying it. Yeah, not much to really brought solid. Yeah, I think I'd enjoy. I agree with Hendrick plus E. Full stop. So most of it's been drunk at the brewery or in cans. You can buy it, buy it in... <laughs> I'm not a lesbian, John. But she would get it. <laughs> there you go. That's from Vicky H. So Vicky H can say that because she's a lady. <laughs> so there you go. It was nice. And it was a lovely occasion to take me up that neck of the woods. That's finished. That's on the floor. I'm going to get the next one out. It's not the first one up. It's the one after. So I, do, I like to be um, seamless like that. Class number two. Teku. Is that on purpose? Is my microphone okay? It moved a little bit. I know we can go to share. Oh, comments while I'm pissing around. Here we go. Kvik, um, Bat Binks uh, says, uh, Kvik IPA they do is really good. I don't, I don't really care for it myself. Didn't love it. Parts unknown. I love that. Uh, two of my favorite things good beer and good food. There you go. I'm a bit more of a fan of No Reservation. I like the, oh, it's a bit more kind of like, it's a bit straight, more straightforward, but I like the, the layover. Something about it. Nice big T-shirt. Thank you very much. I might buy another couple, a few more. I'm tempted. They're not cheap, but I do like them. But yes, it's a lovely T-shirt, isn't it? Thanks, Jagman. The White House is a go-to in Leeds. Yeah, it's a great place. I mean, it's one of the best places to cask. I, I like Duck and Drake as well. Quality, um, quality of beer on it isn't as good, but it's a nice pub. But yeah, and less people. White House can get expe- really, um, really busy. That'd be the only thing that puts me off while up sometimes. And wankers. <laughs> Hope you're, you're not one of those wankers, though, Matt. Don't worry. <laughs> but yes. So I'm just going to pour a little beer. I'd love to know if this ASMR really works. Oh, yeah. You'd be all oh, 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 pouring the lovely pale ale. So, next one. As he reaches to one side, takes that glass. I mean, it's seamless production here on Beer of the Month. I'm looking at my thing off camera. 
I need a helper, don't I? I need a I need a production assistant. Brad Evans, you, you fancy the job, mate? So next one, I'm not gonna fuck around on this one. Boom, yes, new bands, plain, dark, beer, strong Xbox stout, eleven percent ABV. This shit is the good stuff. It's really good stuff. Search around. Hopefully they'll re make it again. This is a damn good beer. Straightforward beer. No adjuncts. No no funny business. Um, just lots and lots of lovely beer in beery goodness. Just a re it like it, it's a grown up beer. At the moment, <laughs> you know you know what it's like these kind of things get a little bit kind of over top. Amundsen and the likes. <coughs> I've taken things a little bit silly. This is a straightforward beer, but bags of flavour. Just absolutely bags of flavour. Kicking out everything you'd expect from a full-on stout. Coffee, chocolate, licorice, kind of leather and tar and things like that. Quite grown-up flavours in that sense. Really nice. Could have been a winner. There's, I mean, I've got a, I've got a couple of winners, really, what could have easily won. But this, until Wednesday, was my beer of the month. And it's been out a couple of months. It was just, it took me a while to track it down, but it's fucking brilliant. Look around. If you can get it, get it. If you can't get it, badger new bands to get, to, to make more because it's just, it's just stupidly good. It's such a good beer. Amazing stuff. So while you're on that, I'm going to jump on the old untapped new bands. That'd be. Let's jump on over to Untapped. So yes, four point two eight. Yes, yes, and absolutely yes. That's exactly what it should be. That is, it is a beer of that standard. I mean, I think if it's four above, you're onto a good thing, aren't you? But um, it is, it's good shit. Is this? As Matt S says, this is the one. Hearts, no adjuncts needed. That thing, what I don't fully understand. Straight up Imperial Stout. Boom. Yes, absolutely. Oh, Nicholas Gbar from Vessel, lovely Katie and Sam down in uh, in Plymouth. You're a bit tight on it, Philip. I'll let you off, but still, it's, you mean everybody's loving it. Four, four plus, four plus, four plus, four plus. Everybody's loving it. Is that on, oh, is that on draft? Oh, you drank it on draft, James. Eh, you lucky bugger. But I don't like beer makes just tap. If I'm being honest, don't care for it. But yeah, look, everybody's loving it. It is seriously good shit, is this beer. And a lot of people drinking it in... Oh, Bee Hoppy, where's that? It's just another shop. But yeah, as you can see... Oh, I mean, oh. Wait, what? How? Please don't end. Epicurium, the shop in Manchester. Let's get some Manchester. But yeah, any more comments? Should be a nice picture of, some, of a hot dog. Not sure about pickles. Too much shit on it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as you can see, people are loving it. It is a seriously good beer, extremely good beer. Yeah, there you go, plain dark beer. I've not really jumped on the kind of new bands bandwagon all that much, but I think this. I mean, I think they're good, but I drink IPA a lot of the time, and they do the more kind of conventional style or the more traditional styles. And I don't find them all that exciting. But this was worth finding and worth buying and getting a rather excited about well, that's, he's gonna grab it, he's gonna grab it. There we go. Next one. Which is actually the beer what I have in my glass, but I do have an empty can to to situate over on the on the on the on the on the on the, on the alternate camera. I know that battery don't run out of my phone, that'd be a pisser, wouldn't it? So next up, what are the new Kings of the, the UK I and mean, one of the emerging breweries that I think not enough people are taking a notice of Glass House, uh, Outskirts of Birmingham, wonderful stuff. Soloist, single hop, citra hop, session pale, not a session IPA, good because that's a silly thing. Yeah, 4.2. 4.2, mate. 4.2. It's great. And this is what I'm drinking now. I wanted to, if I can do this, I will kind of have a drink. Of some of the beers while I do this, if possible, but, so I can I can give you a little review. So I've not reviewed this, I don't think. I've had a couple of cans. 
it's just a lovely citra party. It's soft, it's um pineapple and mango, definitely a tato citron, your lemon tart. Frag really fragrance kind of citrus zest. Oh, so it's, it's lovely. But then it has a slightly kind of um chakras pastry kind of brioche kind of like backbone to it. Mm -mm -mm. Getting drinking more glass house. You can probably still buy this online. If there's any left, yeah, there might be a hop a, a optimist in Geisley. I know you get in um glass house, and I think you can buy direct as well. Not many places to stock it, but great beer, straightforward, but lovely expression of citra. As I said, grapefruit, pineapple. Kind of wildflowers, even. Maybe slight honey kick to it. Not quite bitter, but it's zi ze zest zesty and zippy. But yeah. An absolute delight. Just super easy drinking. Bags of flavour. Mm. It's good shit. I'll always... I won't buy everything from Glass House, but I'll buy most of from Glass House. Honourable mention, you batch of Sakura. I think I mentioned that. Last month or, or the first month, I've done three of these now, I think. And um, yeah, and one of the places I want to go as soon as we're allowed to kind of like get around, I want to go and drink beer at Glass House and, and do some shitty online on location vlog for you. Um, I've got no kind of false <laughs> understanding of what I deliver on the channel. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to jump on the album tap for this. So glass. Yes. Oh, soloist. Here we go. Bobbing onto the old untapped. There we go. Four. Boom. On the button. 4.2. Oh, it'd be funny if it was 4.2 on 4.2, wouldn't it? Pungent peach under underlapped. That's a new one by Honey and Dew Melon. Yeah, maybe a bit of melon. A citrus pith finish. Well, yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? Perfect peachy pale. Peach or uh, your preferred emoji for a lovely bottom. <laughs> Come on, Murphy. Oh, is that the lad? Is that, uh, is that the Hebrew called Murphy? I have a five run. Oh, no, it must. Oh, is it the, oh, is it the fucking snooker? Yeah, he's, um, no, he's the big lad, isn't he? He's not going to win. Crushable, as the kids say. Yeah, I know. As the kids say. Well say, John A. Use your glass house magic. Still trying to get my head around a supposed glass, uh, glass house cask appearing at the uh, Coracle soon. I don't know that. Uh, this may be a day off right there, especially with cask club at this camp, wherever that is. Don't know where that place is. Shall we find out? I'll, I'll open another tab. Yeah, so it's getting good ratings. It's good shit, is this? It really is a lovely beer. Sturgeously, it's buying, obviously, a lot of it being bought locally. Single hop session IPA. This is excellent. A perfect late afternoon starter beer. Single hop citra, full of flavour and juice for a rel relevantly low ABV. It is low ABV, in it? 4.2. Come on. Hazy, bit juicy, bitter lemon number. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much on board with you, mate. Hmm. Not enough comments on these beers, but yeah. Premier Hop must stock them as well. Nice clean a oh, little bit. Elliot J. Nice clean taste. But a bit on the thin side. It's fucking 4.2. Have a word with yourself. Like. Gets a bit more of a designer. Uh, leaving it to be leaving more to be desired. It's 4.2. Pale ale. You've given it 4.3.5. So yeah, it's a bit boring after a bit. Oh, I don't like you, Elliot J. You can do numpty jobs. Let's find him somebody else. I'm going to end on that. Super mellow, no bitterness, solid. Oh, come on, Ollie R. I want somebody with a bit more imagination. Nice glass from Siren. But yeah, all in all, I think pretty good reigns. A stunner. I'm, I'm going to end on Luke S. as a stunner. And that's the bottom line, because Luke S. said so.
So there you go. There you go. I love it. I think it's a damn tasty beer. Mm -mm. Sip a beer for the working man. I've not been working today. Um, grab me empty. Pop that down there. Moving around. Seamless production on Hop Zine again. Right then, you buggers. It's going to get dark. Next one is... It's another one. It's another Free Hills BP AVK. I do enjoy this range. And um, it's another in the First time they've done maybe going a bit more pastry stouty. As you can see, chocolate tart. Uh, um, lovely stuff. I think, once again, as I've said before, the base beer is really nice. This time, flavour-wise, I was definitely getting quite a pronounced, do you know, melt-in-the-middle chocolate pudding. M&S, not Asda. Asda one shit. More Aldi one, absolute dog shit. M&S. It's, it's a bit like that. Chocolate fondant. It's got a lot of that going on. Lovely. Indulgent, but not too far. The right level of indulgence. It was a, it's a lovely beer, and I said, and I've got the tiramisu, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, I've got two cans of it. Can't remember. Well, one, one tiramisu, two tiramisus, a Bloody Mary, and a margarita. Some live stone cold. Impression <laughs> for you there. Eleven percent ABV. Chocolatey beery loveliness. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, it was really nice. That base beer is a good beer. And and I think they put flavours on it in varying degrees of success. But this was a really nice beer. Oh, so I've got another can of it knocking around. So that will appear. Um in my glass <laughs> at some point, I would imagine. Um, so let's go on the untapped on this. So three. My, my, my um, keyboard is on a box. I was sent to me by Harry Meadows, actually. But someone let me throw it away. It's because it's yellow. It's a yellow DHL box. You won't let me throw it away for some reason. And my um, keyboard's on the top of that. So I've got a better camera angle. Slightly more flattering than it would be if it was lower. I'm so vain. <laughs> and um, oh, but I have to put BP on that BP. Um, have I switched over? I'm, 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 a, I'm a main oh, we've got we're on here. Aren't we? Here we go. I'm, I'm gonna go full on here so you can see the process. Chocolate tart. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Three points. 4.37. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's a great beer. It's a really nice beer. Lovely chocolate flavour, good mouthfeel. Yep. Yeah, I think that's it. Catherine S. I'm thinking, I know a Catherine from that. From no, It's not the one I'm thinking of. Oh, 11% rather than the usual 10. Huh? But an extra 1% seems to make a difference. Seemingly more boozy than usual. So it was good, but still missing the velvety quality of last year's. Oh, really? I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad. I like Steve G. You want to be his friend. <laughs> I'd have to find out where that place is. Just to bump to go meet Steve G. I've big big him up so much on this on these streams. But yeah, I think it's a great beer. One of the best stouts I've had. There you go, George S. He's loving it. But yeah, no, it's good. Thick with four C's. Fucking two right, mate. Yes, absolutely. I'm all for that. It's that thick, it should have a TikTok account. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is a, I think it's really good, is this. It's a great beer, and I'm looking forward to tiramisu. I love a tiramisu. Expectations are high, because I I enjoyed this. I loved tiramisu. But it's the first time they've gone into that kind of more um, desserty direction than um, the previous ones, which were... A bit more... Well, they did the coconut macaroon, which I do have another can of as well. Really, really rich. But yeah, it is good. It's good stuff. Beer. Great beer. There you go. It's quite simple, but I think they just absolutely delivered it in fucking spades. Right. I'm just going to pop back onto the um, comments before I get into the last two beers. What we got back here? There we go. So Matt Bink says, uh, that can looks 
Like it means business. <laughs> Everyone loves a citra pie too, right, Jackman? Everybody does love a citra pie. Glass house, not heard of them. For oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah, um, outskirts of Birmingham, place called Sturchley. Yeah, great, great stuff. Not the easiest one to find. Look around on the. It looks like Premier Hop of Addo. Maybe you might find it on like Rad Beer, but I said you probably get some or which is a lesser online shop, but it's a physical shop in Guysley, which is about three miles from me, called Hop Optimist. And so why not? Why not get to get a bit of business that way? And he's he, he's a big fan, so he'll he'll continue just to get in. So Free Hills, local to me. Nice guys. Well, oh, that's good. Oh, that's always nice, isn't it? Got a baseball cap down here. <laughs> oh, it's too far to reach. I put my baseball cap on. Yeah, I like Free Hills. Not had much pale stuff. Uh, so my lovely, la my lovely lad, Jacob here. Evening, Rob. Still haven't had any steps from Free Hills. I need to. Yes, you do, mate. You do. Yeah, they are. They are quite adjuncty. They are quite sweet, but I think they do a great job. I hope you does as um, cocktail night or ice cream day. Switch days because it's Monday and Sunday. Let me know. Might be knocking around if Harry's still doing his stream from what he started at like four o'clock today after I finish this. So always a pleasure to chat. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed that. So, last two beers. So I reach over. Bottle? Bottle of beer? Who's making bottles of beer? Is it Belgium or German or something? No, but I'm not. <laughs> but not to. Let's get away from controversy. It's from Cloudwater. Yeah, this is pre. Bullshit. <laughs> Pre cloud, what a nonsense. It's called In the Still of the Night. <coughs> so it's a 11.5% ABV Imperial Stout with coffee aged in cognac. This was wonderful. It it, it kind of reminded me, the base beer reminded me of um, the likes of my continuous improvement or persistence is utile. So big fucking full lad. Big, uh, big, robust stout at the base of it. Um, barrel aging, beautifully measured, really co composed, let's say. The coffee still lingered, but the barrel brought a bit of an earthy quality. But there was a, um, cognac. You got a bit of that, but it wasn't too wet, so it wasn't too kind of like bright in the flavour. Everything just sat perfectly. It was just one of those what I was like. I didn't I didn't review it. Just get out of the fridge. Shall we have this? Yeah. And um got on it and it was beautiful. It was really nice. Um one thing I'll say, uh, and I've said, I don't know if people have seen streams when we're talking about it. Everything that I may think about Cloudwater, they they're still capable of making some of the best beer around. And this is a great example of that. I do have the another the blended stout from Cloudwater. So I look forward to that. So whatever I think about Cloudwater, they still make fantastic beer, and that was an absolute corker. But so let's have a look on Untapped for this one, and it is what's it called? In the still of the night. There's nobody going to have another beer called that, is it? Still of the night. <laughs> what's that? Is that from some shit metal song from the eighties? In the come on, still of <laughs> the night. It's all night. Get my cable for me, Mike's stretching across it. You know what? What's it called? That's what it's called. And still, stillness. Oh, stillness of the night. Oh, sorry. A longer, longer fucking name for <laughs> you. Lost the dig because it's cloud water. There we go. Here we go. You can see that's an on tap now. Yeah. Sorry about the unfortunate angle of the ty online typing. I said I'm a bit. Meep, meep, meep. Eleven point five, four point four one. Yes, yes, absolutely. Also, pure set infused with coffee, cacao, vanilla, and tonka. I can't remember it being tonka. Fish used cognac. No, it's chocolate tart. Oh, there's a double chocolate tart going on here. Every coffee in deep spirit character. Best paired with retiring. With retiring earlier than usual and indulging in a period of conscious inactivity, made uh, made with time and love, cloud water. 
Who's who's got the clear bottle of it? What monstrosity is this? Clear bottle? Have a fucking word. Somebody refilled it for you, lad. Put a label on it or something. I think you've been done. Well, cloud, clear bottles all around, but as you can see, what well, was the rain for? But for one, yeah, it is. It's it's it is a seriously good beer, an excellent beer. Is this? It says dark chocolate caramel tongue, vanilla tongue, all wrapped up in a boozy cognac barrel. Nice, Matt. Just the the original Matt. Any more? So you get. I mean, it's big, big, big numbers. Four plus at most of them. I'm not. Part, it's about many fives yet. But yeah, it is super boozy. But the barrel, barrel aged part is definitely the main characteristic. I don't think so, Richard. But yeah, still very enjoyable. It is. Yeah, it was really good. The boozy is there, uh, but it complements the smooth. Mm, yes, best one so far tonight. The cognac come through. Need a t um, triple IPA to clear the palate now. <laughs> you dirty animal. But yeah. It was seriously good. So, <laughs> still thing that sounds like an Iron Maiden song. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Next up, the final one and beer of the month. It didn't come to me until um, Wednesday just passed. So, I've got I, actually, <laughs> I'm not going to spoil this fucking cigarette for, for you. I'll put a review of this coming soon on Hopzine. And the man himself, yeah, 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 the man himself, drinking it right in front of you for your bank holiday pleasure. I've got one, second glass. I've got that in my Moving my glasses around, hopefully I might have a chat with some other fellow beer tubers, unless they've fucked off. It is nearly nine o'clock. Harry's been streaming for like five hours. And it is, as I crack it open... I'm going to switch over to this. It is Revenge of the Sticky Bud. Double IPA from Wylam. Up in Newcastle. Oh, the rest, how, I'm, how I am restra restraining myself from making, doing a bad Geordie accent. You know I, how I enjoy it so much. Actually, no. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, uh, there's an honourable mention after, with it, after this, but I'm going to go in this. This is Beer of the Month. I just reminded myself of what beer that I didn't write down. So this is, yes, Revenge of the Sticky Bud. Double IPA, hopped with so so eight point seven hopped with Citra, Mosaic, and Simcoe. Sticky bud, it's giving you an idea of something else, isn't it? Yeah, that's what you're thinking. It it's laying the it's laying the groundwork for what your expectations. But um, we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, I will mention. This is this is the one where I was telling you to start. I'm not sure. I've got kind of got ten. I've kind of got eleven. Two from Salt, and then I had two more variants of Granola Coaster from Siren, which I am spamming you with every fucking month. It appears. Uh, I wasn't sure about this one, the uh, the cacao and orange, but it just it did its job really well. Then I had the almond and coconut one, which was lovely. Maybe didn't hit the levels that I was hoping for. Maybe a little bit soapy. That was lovely. I do not like chocolate, chocolate flavored beer, uh, chocolate orange flavored beer. But that was lovely. That was a lovely marmalade kind of like orange flavor, really fragrant review coming soon. But that and the almond and coconut one was the kind of like honorable mentioning one. I'm going to chuck in there because I had the two salt as well. So, but anyway, back to the beer of the month Revenge of the Sticky Bud from Wyland. Let's have a look at the can again. Boom. Oh, yeah, look at that. And the crazy kind of psychedelic. Artwork, the third. Eye, I presume that's the, the the third eye. What um was it? Timothy Leary kind of like brought brought about that kind of the whole thing. But this is good shit. Anyway, I'll give you a, a little one of those little reviews. But please do check out review. Well, I'll probably post post next week because it's. I think it's one of the best reviews I've done in a while because you're always searching for those moments where you get a beer which is just like oh fuck you know that's really good. This was one of those beers. So as you can see, kind of like it's kind of mid haze. It's not. It's, it's not as not as thick as you can see on my slightly iffy cam on my on my laptop. Aroma wise, though, and if it's going to remind me of that moment, though, if it's going to be exactly the same. Oh, mama! 
Ooh, menthol and citrus and pine, really fragrant pine. Oh, that was a two, that was a thought. Oh, pine and honey. It's not resinous as this making you think. While I'm doing often make sometimes quite savory, often quite dank flavoured beers. This is making you think dank in it, sticky bud. It's marijuana, obviously. And mosaic and simcoe, which are kind of seen as that, but I don't get it. For me, it's it's a really fresh, vibrant, zippy pine. But yeah. Oh and then honey and grapefruit pineapple. Whoa. Cheers. Beer of the month. Oh, come on now, yeah. Watch the review. It smells better than what you can see now. But I kind of think what I'll take from, away from this beer is it, it's true double IPA. It takes me back to drinking um, double IPAs in California. It's it's somewhere between that West Coast style. For me, it's West Coast flavour profile, but with, a, um, with the juiciness and haze of New England style. Because the flavour is that kind of honey, and lemon, and loads of grapefruit, and and a fragrant, lovely, vital, fragrant um, pine, and then the juiciness because the flavour is is full on. Oh, you get that lovely evergreen, effervescent, so fragrant um, kind of pine quality knocking around the the olfactory system and stuff. It's lovely. It's a great beer. Um, but then drinkability, none of, the, none of the bitterness you get from West Coast, which is sometimes a bit of a shame, but it does take me back to drinking double IPAs in California, which is hopefully something I'll get to do again at some point in the near future. Ooh. So, such some magical memories drinking those kind of beers. But this kind of, it does both. I love New England style. I love West Coast. Oh, good stuff. Fucking brilliant. But yeah. As we're drawing up to the hour mark, Revenge of the Sticky Bud from Wylam, double IPA, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic. It's fucking brilliant. Bought another two, uh, I shared a can last Wednesday, bought another two cans. Saturday, just gone. Having one now. My bad holiday treat. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a great beer. Absolutely love it. Top draw stuff. That's from Wylam. So, yes. Big thanks to everybody who's um, joined me live. Oh, oh comments. Just jump on comments before I, I say goodbye. Um, it's not as nice. I've done that one. It's Wylam. It's double IPA. It's going to be good. I see. I'm a bit funny about Wylam's kind of flavor profile on the double IPA. It's a bit more dank, danker than I like. It's a bit more fruit bowl, a bit more citrus. But this is it's good shit. Free Hills are awesome. I've now had about six of their beers. Also including the Black Cup Sour and Triple IPA Triple IPA Armchair, which blew, blew me away. Oh, really? Okay. I'm I'm having a funny way with triples at the moment. I'm off I'm off them a bit. Um, but yeah, I think they I think they're really good. I, I, when I go to London, I'm going to be going to Free Hills. Um, uh, Free Hills um, t- new tap room, and as Matt from ba- Massive Beer Reviews, was drinking the shit, <laughs> drinking the shit out of that. Did you try Wallam's Good Things Double IPA? I don't know. I'm a, I've got a very visual memory. Show me a can. I, rec- I remember the artwork. Don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah, but this, as I said, I'll flick it. Oh, actually, let's. Oh, we did it on tap, did we? Got to do it on tap for fucking beer at month, aren't we? Revenge of the Sea Blood. Yeah, you got to do the untap. I've got all this way. You got excited at the last minute for the beer of the month, and I would jump jump onto untap for it. Four point three two and two fucking right. What's it say? Spine chilling suds, <laughs> unparalleled excitement. Sticky bud returns it. It's a dank, drippy, vaporous slumber oozing with uh, mellifluous hop reek due to the toxic merge of zooty. <laughs> yeah, all right, calm down. Uh, broad in the beam, plump and fleshy, with an A-bomb cocktail of tropical bloom. Boom. Boom. <laughs> All swallowed up in a revenous 
glut of skunky chiba. <laughs> great, yeah. It's great beer. Yeah, people are loving it. Loving it, loving it. Oppy and dang as it can be. Oh, it can get banger. Don't like that term. Sticky, dang, hot bomb. Quite easily uh, be the best beer I've tried this year. Nearly in, uh, near, near enough. 9% this is from Callum S. Uh, there's no hint of booze. It's dang and full of citrus and stone fruit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's cat. Oh, I mean, finally I found something down there. What did she give it? 4.25. Mm, initial thoughts. Overripe banana. Mm, couldn't have smell. Mm, not going for a cat. Sorry. There is a tinge of paint. I know what you mean with paint. Not on this, though. But there is green hoppy edge. No, I didn't get the green. I didn't get the green. Oh, you must have drunk this fresher than me, cat. The right way of veggie <laughs> on the veggie meter. Do enjoy a while, as always. Cracking can out. Hmm. Didn't enjoy it as much as me. So look at the full picture. See what was going. What else is going on there? Oh, it's someone's leg. But yeah, I thought that was a lovely beer. What else is uh, Benedict P? Good name. I love to give a uh, comparison to Sticky Bob, um, but I had, but I had it. But I had it many, many double IPAs ago. So it's difficult for me to remember too many details. So none of that. This is dank, hoppy number, sweet, bright, tropical fruit. Yet uh, not yet clean and a little bitter. And I'm being citrus and fragrant and yum 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 yum. <laughs> Enjoy everything. Double IPA should be a more. Yeah, look, people are loving it. People are loving it. Great beer. Anybody else? Anybody else? While well, I'm smashing out the double IPAs, big dank marmalade boy. Yeah, I don't like the term boy. So many conflicts in this <laughs> situation, isn't there? I know. Usual quaffable <laughs> IPA. While well, I'm triple IPA, it's not a triple, it's a double. Sorry, mate. Absolute banging. So much hops. Not too sweet like some of the double IPAs. It's nice, such a bitterness, too. I don't see, I don't see it's bitter. It's just got a nice bite to it. Like drinking a joint. Super dank. Love it a lot. I don't think it is dank. I think um, essentially you've got, you've got insufficient palates, you guys. <laughs> I think it's got a lot more kind of clarity to a lot than a lot of people. Don't buy into the name because I think it's more than the name. Juicy, sticky citra, while I'm killing it as usual. But yeah, sticky, fruity stuff. I think they're not buying into the name too much. I think it's got a lovely kind of. I think there's more to it than that. I think it's got a lovely fragrance to it and a lovely, quite precise kind of bite of, of flavour to it. I think it's um I think it's lovely stuff. So yeah. But finally, put uh put dank in it as well. Things <laughs> Wait, right, nice one. But yeah. Lovely stuff. Beer of the month. Get out, try it. Revenge of the sticky bud. It reminds me of a little bit if Pliny for president was better. <laughs> it might be this beer if it was lucky. Yeah, it's fucking brilliant. So, Revenge of Sticky Bud from Wylam. 8.7% ABV. Double IPA. Beer of the month from me. Big thanks to everybody who's joined me live. Big thanks to everybody who watches this after the fact. See you next month. And then, uh, as I always say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Cheers. Oh. <laughs>